are you up for some viewer questions? Absolutely. Okay, Please. so again, uh, we got a, we got a bunch of these questions from the Facebook group that we're in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Wonderful people in that group. The moderators. They are. The they are. They're some great. They're really great people. Absolutely. And yeah, enough very cannot be said for them. Passionate and knowledgeable. Right. We, we keep saying that. So. Right. Yeah. So we, right we went right to them and said, guys, let's get let's get some questions. Yeah. Right, we we yeah. were overwhelmed with questions. Uh, I, I, I bet. I bet. I bet. Um. So I think we have about six of them for us. Uh, this yeah. first okay. this first question comes one uh, from the group chat. Obviously, it's by uh, from Nat Cleesby. Okay. Um, Nat, Nat, you might remember, is um, uh, the person who made those wonderful props. And right. She made the the the, the silver moon sword. Right. Um, Found your right. moon sword. Right. So this is this is this is Nat. Um, okay. What language was written on moon sword, um, and what does it say? Oh man. Are, um, are you privy to that? I info? never. I yeah, never asked that? that question. I never uh, really okay. asked that okay. question. Um, never really asked. You know, I just thought it was just really cool, man. You know, yeah, yeah. it was just some well, cool what's your, writing. What's your idea? So what? What, what did they say? say? Uh, well, no, these are questions for you. We didn't. You know, these are these are. Ge- well, that that yeah. I would I would say those those markings and the uh, the writing on there would have to do something about faith and honor, and uh, also courage and battle. I would say so. That's what I thought, but I never really thought to ask anyone. You know, that never really came up. But in my head, for my backstory, I just thought it might it might be, you know, courage uh, and, and honor and uh, to honor oneself in the battlefield, never leave a person behind. You know, that kind of thing, but more or less of the long, along the line of courage and honor yeah, yeah. and face yeah. your enemy kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that this sword uh, in, entails uh, the, the, the strength and the might of others, you know, who may have willed that sword or, or the person who made it kind of thing. Yeah. So um, there was going to be. Um, well, I can't say that because I'm going to give it away. Okay, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'll tell. I'll tell you guys when we're done. Okay, I'll tell you because this okay. happens in the second eight. The second eight. And, okay. and I, yeah, now tell you guys. All right. Okay. Well, a um, lot of stuff. Any idea what that what that language could be though? Like what what would be what language would that be? I would think that would be a language that probably was formed after the whole fall of society. Okay. And they went to a, another writing because remember, it's, you know, by now we're talking about everything that was ancient that happened in Azra. Mm-hmm. So it would have to be something that was based out of there that just spread it out through, throughout, throughout the land. Yeah. And, um, you know, because we're not reading um, and everything, the landscape has changed and all that right. kind of stuff. So it would have to be something that is ancient to us at that time and uh, something that, that, you know, requires um, maybe you know something like if you would write write some markings from the Bible, right. you know, on on your sword about you know again uh, faith in battle or you know you would have something a, a specific like the pommel, right? Yeah, you know, that oh, I yeah, yeah. With the with with the animal head, right. I don't know what kind of animal that is, but it looks kind of really cool. Yeah. It's kind of like maybe a hybrid of a dog uh, or, or some some kind of you know at that time. Uh, early canine that got affected from yeah. uh, the nuclear fallout, you know, yeah, and, yeah. you know, things mutated. So I, I would say something like that. So okay, it's cool. kind of cool. And cool. maybe it will say something about, you know, having the strength of that animal within that sword. Yeah. It's very Game you of know? Thrones, right? It's very Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. cool. So next question for you is, and this is, okay, so uh, one part, one half comes from uh, uh, Bridge on the Facebook group and also Jay on the Facebook group. Okay. Okay. The first part is going to be, or the first question, have you ever struggled with nerves when acting or getting into character and how did you overcome it? Um, Mm -hmm. And then also in regards to that, uh, do you have a ritual before you do scenes, kind of like Matthew McConaughey thumping on his chest? Exactly. Okay. So um, the last time I was really nervous before I did a scene, it was with Clifton Collins Jr. and Ed Harris in uh, Westworld. Right. Okay. Because I'm I'm such an Ed Harris fan. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I've always been. I always think that. I always thought that Cliff was a, and is a fantastic organic actor. So working with those two guys, it was really cool. And I was also really, really nervous. Uh, and you know, <clears throat> and it's kind of hard when you um, admire actors and you're just thrust into a scene with them. And when I was doing Low Winter Sun, I, I had to walk into the scene. Did we talk about this last time? I don't think so. Okay. No. I had to walk into the scene uh, where it was uh, Lenny James, Mark Strong, and Ruben Santiago. They were doing this volley of dialogue. Yeah. And I walk in and I'm like, and I say all this stuff. And I kept saying, oddly enough, oddly enough, I kept saying, 
the guy's name was McCann. I kept saying McCain, right? Oh. And I and because because I was just so because I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, man, I'm I'm sparring with these guys. These yeah. guys are cool. All right, cool. Mark Strong, Lenny, and you know, Ruben, and you know, I blew two takes. And I said, look, guys, all right. So all you guys are my favorite actors. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna pull my stuff together, and I'm yeah. come back, and I'm gonna just run this scene. And so. We got into it and it was really fun and it, you know because I had been shooting for about three weeks and then once once I came on you know it's kind of hard for an actor to jump on a moving train yeah right because you're asked you know hey mm-hmm. everybody's waiting for you in the dining car and mm-hmm. guess what you're cutting the turkey right kind of thing yeah. so and then mm-hmm. you're, you're working with your some of your favorite actors so it's kind of freaky it's yeah, kinda, yeah it's kind of yeah. it's kind of weird so uh, that was really nerve wracking uh, working with Julia Roberts working with Gandolfini James Gandolfini and Brad Pitt that was kind of like kind of cool but I did a ritual for that I had so much time to get ready I would post pictures of because I had to be an absolute dick to <laughs> Julia Roberts so I would post pictures of her around my place and just stop and just do dialogue oh right? cool right and just I'm not afraid to break the you know 20 million dollar woman ah I'll kill you woman that kind of thing <laughs> yeah right? yeah and just so when I got on set you know I just I can just get in there and just yeah. start sparring with these actors and that worked, and um, and of course, you know, you learn a lot working with those folks. Ritual-wise, uh, I always, and I saw Jim Gandolfini uh, do this also. He just because he had to be when he walks in and he shoots me, he was he had to be really up. So he, to get his energy up, he just walked over to the wall and started punching the wall and going off and you know just saying all this stuff I'm like, yeah, that's really cool, man. Yeah, I gotta yeah. use that. You know, my thing is always internal. I try to find a place. Uh, where no one's watching. If someone's watching, that's fine. But, you know, I just take myself there. And, and again, it's all about getting that character off the page. So I would always let that particular character evaluate me by saying, what can you give me to get me off the page? Right. What can you, what are you going to do? What yeah. have you been through in your life? And yeah. then we start that dialogue and we go at it. We just go at it. And then by that time, when I walk on set, I'm good. So once you do that enough, 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 and you know that character, then it becomes easy. But I, with, with Nathaniel, I didn't want it to. Get, I didn't want to get complacent and lazy. Yeah. So I would always, even if I'm walking to set, I would always have that voice. I would have Nathan, that Nathaniel in my head, just saying, "Ask me those questions." Yeah. And then yeah. I can walk on set because that's yeah. the best way and the only way for an actor to be present and to have a real moment. Like we're talking now. This is a real moment. Yeah. So those are the moments that I look for, and they have to be real. So therefore, I'm not listening to anything. I don't listen to the dialogue coming out of my mouth. I'm focusing on that actor, and all that takes place in the preparation of that character. And um, even months before reporting back uh, to uh, into the Badlands, I reevaluated Nathaniel. So we had to reevaluate this whole situation because I knew I was coming back without a hand. I was going to be, I didn't know where I was going to be uh, specifically, if I was going to be a region or whatever. All that was a surprise for me. Oh, cool. But I was, I was open to that. So Nathaniel would talk to me and tell me, hey, man, just be willing and ready to go whichever way they want you to go. Yeah. Because that's what I am. I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah. And it just yeah. it just it just really fit when I read the script and I read about the Moon Tower. I'm like, cool. Because I kind of sequestered myself from friends and family a little bit the last week and a half before I left because I needed that uh that emptiness back and I needed that um that focus. Yeah. So falling into that scene, when we shot that scene, it was boom, right there. I was like, Whoa. Yeah. And it kinda scared me a little bit. It kinda it kinda scared me. So there's nothing more for an actor, there's nothing more gratifying than when you're heading home and you know you made everybody's day easier. Yeah. And I like to do things that surprise me, myself, yeah. and I, I get a kick out of it. So I get back home and I'm like, oh, dude, that was really crazy when you said this when you did that. Ah, oh, you're a crazy guy, sure. It goes back into and your head, head, right? Yeah. Yeah, it goes back into my head. So those things. So I, I you know, it keeps me present and keeps you sharp. And uh, it's all about letting that character evaluate you. And cool. that's what it's about. Very cool. Awesome. You, you make me really want to go be an actor, you know. You know, it's, it, but it, that's the fun part about it, you know. To, I think I am more comfortable in front of the camera doing that and doing the process yeah. than I am as just Sherman walking around. Tell you the truth. Well, I'm assuming truth. also that since you've been on the show now for a while, it's not more nerves. It's like you said, it's preparing for the character because right. you're mm-hmm. you're working on a show and you're comfortable with the actors around right. you. And I mean, listen, years ago I I did a lot of improv stuff. I did some improv classes and stuff in the city and. I was always nervous, regardless. Any time I was asked to go up, I was always nervous until I got up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yep. once I'm on on stage or doing wherever I am, I don't want to get off. 
Exactly. Exactly. Because so, improv is improv is very hard. Uh, if someone says, <laughs> I was like, no, don't say that. <laughs> this thought that went through my head. Um, uh, I mean, there's no no. If yeah. you say anything like, you know, yeah, I, I saw you eating a tuna shit sandwich the other day. And you go, wow, yes, I did. And guess what? Your mom made it. And it was fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. you keep it going. So you got to let these things fly from your cerebral cortex. Mm -hmm. And who's good at that is Nick Frost. Oh, yeah. yeah. 24 yeah. hours a day, regardless of the things that come out of his mouth. And so me going back in my head and thinking about when I did improv theater for five years, that training helped. When oh, you're yeah. working with mm -hmm. someone yeah. like Nick, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so it's like even if he, you know, you're trying to win that scene, you're trying to win that scene, and Nick says something, and you go, <laughs> uh, "Dude, I just, I just lost this scene. Whatever." Okay. Yeah, well, I know you gotta be like, "Whatever, it's <laughs> oh, fine." Oh, whatever. Okay. I'll so get you, you next time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what it becomes. So yeah, improv theater is great. So you know how it is. Yeah. You definitely know how it is. Yeah. All cool. right, great. That was great. I'm gonna. I was gonna do this. I'm gonna. No, speak. yeah. Let's go to that one. Yeah. So you're speaking. We're speaking about Moon and, and, and the Moon Tower and everything. Right. And, um, obviously, Moon Sword is very iconic. Right. Uh, we we've gotten a question from Cool Guy. Um, would you like to explore more on how Moon obtained the sword? Absolutely. Um, was it made specifically for 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 him? Um, did he take it from somebody similar to what how Sonny took it from you? What's your I idea think, on that? I think it was given to him from, uh, you know, maybe a mentor or, uh, again, just like his wife, that he, his first wife, he won in battle. I think maybe he might have won that from somebody else because okay. it is a legendary sword. So mm -hmm. that okay. sword has this uh, persona about it. And that sword is basically a character on the show. So, yeah. you know, that That's... sword is, a, is the character on the show. And uh, it's such an iconic, um, iconic theme and thing of, of, of the Badlands. And so I think the thing that I ran through my head was two different things. Either he won it in battle or it was given to him by a, a mentor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he carried that sword with him and it just, you know, made his legend even more because what Sonny said in season two, uh, episode three, a uh, legendary clipper with a black sword. Right. Yeah, everybody knows that black sword. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's so cool. I, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I mean, these are little things I, I sit around my place. I started, you know, taking those things in my head and trying to check those things off to help yeah. me just be So it's not that necessarily guy. them yeah, you, giving you the idea yeah. of this and giving, give, already giving you a story behind it. You're coming up yeah. with your own yeah. story. Yeah, coming up with your own backstory. You know, all actors do that, you know, where... Where is he coming from? What's he doing? And where is he going? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, know you, you, you brought up something really, like a really cool idea. Um, so, you know, like The Walking Dead with the Red Machete yeah. webisode yeah. things. How cool would it be to see? Because, I mean, Moon's sword is, is really the only sword that's a character on the show. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, everyone's got swords and knives and stuff like you know, but it's they're not, not like named. Lord of the Rings. They're or not something. right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Moon Sword is really like I, I would love to see webisodes or something. You know, like, like a flashback even of how you got Ooh. it or little. Ooh. You know, you know what I'm saying. Ooh. AMC. Okay, let's I'll, get I'll, on I'll, it, I'll, right? I'll put that well, out the blacksmith I'll just I'll making it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, where did this sword come from, guys? Because if The Walking Dead can do it with a red machete, like you know, this is way more iconic. And like you said, it's it's a character, and you know, like Cool God Jay saying, like this would be the backstory. You know, would be so cool to, to flesh out. Be. You know, it would be. It would be. So yeah, excellent, excellent. Cool. Good idea. Cool. Cool. Okay. Right. Oh, uh, am I up? We got another one. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is what I was looking for. I had I had the question. So <laughs> staying along with Moon and the Moon Tower and his sword. Okay. Uh, before facing the widow at the tower. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is also from Cool Guy Jay. Uh, he, he came up with a, a bunch of good ones uh, about okay. about Moon and the sword and stuff. So before facing the widow at the tower. Um, Moon was challenged by many opponents. Right. Um, what went through uh, Moon's mind when fighting these foes? So, you know, what 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 were his thoughts? You know, as they were coming to him, as these think, as they were. Was there sympathy for these people because you know that you're going to beat them? Is it more like the training part of it? Because now you're working it was, with the, your it other. Was, it was more of the training part of it because he wanted to face Sunny and Baji again. Mm -hmm. You know, and get the Moon Sword back. Yeah. And uh, you know, regain his honor. So it was more or less like, and I say it in dialogue, you know, you know, they come along and uh, to challenge, you know, Nathaniel because now, you know, he's got one arm, but you know, he makes the crude, you know, rebar 
extended, you know, hook thing, you yeah. know, and he starts captain claw, some guy yeah. called him Captain Hook, right? The yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and so he's still working, you know, two hands, but um, it was to, it was learning a new style because Moon's style uh, in season, in season two, episode three, he's more brutal mm-hmm. because that, if that is a broadsword, so that broadsword is more like hacky. Right. Right. So now he has to gain a little finesse mm-hmm. in his fighting style and that so he started gaining that more and once the widow comes along then he has to put his true skill to test he's like, oh, now we've got now i've got to contend. now yeah, yeah now i gotta contend because you you saw like uh when i extend the rebar you know like she's so she's dope. kicking my ass yeah. right i'm like oh okay <laughs> rebar yeah what you know about this right here yeah right? <laughs> so that was really fun to do and yeah. um uh, I really think that the, the challenges that came along was basically his way of training. You know, he stayed sequestered. He didn't go out and look for folks. They, they came, came to him. They came to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. This change gears a little bit. A little bit of a, little bit of a change. Okay. Uh, why January? Why are we waiting so long? Everyone's asking. You're like, the, yeah, every the Emmys, community. Yeah, the why Emmys, January? Emmys snub stuff. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. How, how I, do you? How do? In your idea, how do you think um, AMC can better promote the show? I mean, obviously, this is a question from every from from everyone right, with the petition right. stuff, and and we obviously had this interview with with Daniel about the Emmy right, stuff. So I we just wanted that. to kind of get your idea why we're taking so long to to get into the Badlands um, season three, uh, second half back. Okay. Just your idea. So- Every, everything that I'm going to say is is, is my own personal right. uh, yeah well, that's what we want. Uh, view of it and and you know speaking with other you know actors on the show everybody has their own um, view of what's going on mm-hmm. but for me I do know that AMC really 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 loves the show good and they want the show to succeed they're just trying to find a place where it can live and breathe now mm-hmm. we do have uh, the Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead so when you notice how we are always behind one or the other, you know, that's our lead in. And so I just think that they really believe in the show um, and they just want to tie all their best shows in together. Mm -hmm. So that's why they keep flipping it that way. And you notice that they do that with the walking dead and fear of the walking dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, They give them X amount of episodes, they break and then they do all these other things that they have programmed. And then they come back with fear of the walking dead and they just keep, rotating these things so so it's a good business model and a good way to keep people interested in 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 everything but i think for us this is a longer wait than i think i maybe once when i was like a big gigantic walking dead fan uh they did do that where they had a big chunk of time it was a big break yeah you know yeah remember around like season two season three two four something like that they started doing those big gigantic breaks yeah right so I think uh, that's a that's a model that they use to make help that show be more successful, to gain more fans. Okay. And I think now, you know, I'm not into programming, but you know, <laughs> I'm just I'm just this, this is just coming out the top of my head. I think what they're doing is, you know, with the other shows that they have coming on, and you know, and the way they market these things, that they have to put so much x amount of dollars into each each show for uh, press and publicity and all these things. And then the cost of the show. And I do think, from what I hear, our show is the most expensive show that AMC produces. Wow. And they're no way cheap about, I'm sorry, they're yeah. no way cheap about giving uh, the producers and our showrunner uh, and the show what they need. They mm-hmm. get the money because. I don't think we feel know, that. I don't, we don't feel yeah, that. Yeah, because you notice the scope of the show was, is so big right now. So, uh, and it's so vast. So therefore, since it's like that, they really want folks to, uh, more, more, you know, more eyes on the show and they want to keep our fans, uh, cause they know there, there are some dedicated fans out there. I mean, if I wasn't on the show, I would be a dedicated fan. I would be pissed right now if I had to wait this long. Now, so yeah, that was, so you know, that was planned already January. I, it was, it was, I don't think it was planned. Plan. Um, I knew that we were going to do a break. I thought by the time, I thought that we were going to come back around November, December. Mm-hmm. I was cool with that. But then when I heard January, yeah. okay, fine. So that takes us into the new year. Right. And then we only have a couple of more months before 
we go back. Right. So kind of works out. I mean, it kind of works out. I'm, I'm just kind of the whole wait because there's so much, so much great stuff that's going to happen in the second eight that, you know, I just love to see people's reactions. Yeah. And, oh, uh, you know, I really like doing something that, um, you know, there's this, this fan base is incredible and yeah. I take my hands off, to, head off to, to, Hands off. Take my hands off. Take your hands off. <laughs> Take your hand away. We really yeah. did. That's the thing. It's, I really did. I really, really did. did. That, so, yeah. Uh, and that's very important to me. And, you know, when I run into people and I want to talk to you guys, you know, there's nothing more gratifying as an actor to be contributing to something that everyone loves mm-hmm. and you're putting smiles on people's faces. And yeah. that's so important. Everything else is just a byproduct of, of, of you know, good work. Right. But this is important to me and, and to the cast and to everyone, you know, that, you know, produces that show, who works on that show. I mean, from craft service to, you know, our drivers to, you know, everyone. everyone they put yeah. in 150,000 percent plus two, seriously. Yeah. And my hat's off to them also. So, you know, it's a, a big, gigantic team effort with a lot of people. And AMC recognizes that. Yeah. So, um, I just wish that there wasn't such a big, gigantic um, hiatus in between. Yeah. But you know what? Um, still, with us being on hiatus, we're still gaining more fans. Yeah. So whatever the uh, the playbook is for the show, I'm willing to go along with it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just, I just wish we could speed it along a little faster and put, yeah. you know, put our foot on the gas and get there a little quicker. Yeah. You know, but you know, it'll be Christmas tomorrow. And so, you know, I mean, oh th- that is true. The summer but you know, summer, again, so. and obviously, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're doing our part. We're, we're, we're out there even more than ever now. Uh, that's yeah. what the whole trivia hey, thing is about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. No, no absolutely. Problem. No that's, problem. You know, it's, Ooh. we, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, you know, and, you know, again, that's what the trivia game is about, is yeah. something to do to find while we're, while yeah. we're waiting. And we you have know? plenty exactly. of time. We have exactly. plenty of time, obviously, until January, and uh, we have a lot of cool stuff, I'm yeah. sure. And we hope more people will, will latch on to it. You know, yeah. I know Mike's, Mike's gotten some new people onto the show in his life, you know, and, yeah. and I've talked to people uh, who, who, who knew about it but never watched it, but now they watch right. it, and it's like... Right. It's right. you know so so yeah like we're, we're all do we're all doing our part trying to you know exactly push yeah. this and thing. Thank you, you know? guys so much. I can't thank you guys enough. Hey, listen, it, it's it's and you know you're on our show hanging out with us, and that's that's more than we could ever ask. So absolutely, you know. I knew um, you guys were going to be my brothers from from day one when I watched uh, you know the first podcast, guys. I really? Oh, it's, awesome. it's still like, it's still. Uh, reach out, man. I gotta yeah, reach out. Uh, we were yeah we were, we were so psyched when you did that first time. Oh, yeah. it was it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, all right, so check this out. We got one more question for you. Okay. Okay, this one's going to be from Angela S., um, who you okay. may know on the Facebook yep. group. Yep. Um, she's got this is this is a little bit of a thinker now, <laughs> right? So maybe we yeah. can maybe we can all yeah. talk about this. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, she 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 came to us with with this theory that she had. It kind of blew her mind whole. Okay. Okay. And uh, so community members have noticed some interesting theories, or they have an interesting theory with the number seven. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, we have seven in, in the very first episode, MK's um, voiceover, seven baron, barons brought order out of chaos to the Badlands, mm-hmm. you know, banishing the guns and stuff, yeah. um, you know, but then you have, then, you know, you dig a little deeper and, you know, it was seven days to create the world, seven right. deadly sins, there's seven seas, right. you know, there's right. all these, all of these right. correlations and connections, um, you know, and then she goes on to say that Ankara said that Pilgrim will bring the blood and chaos to the Badlands. You know, destruction and chaos, something horrible is coming to the world, and he's going to he's gonna be the shepherd to usher it in. Um, you know, you know, essentially, this is the eighth day now, right? So, right. what, in, like, is, like, what is that correlation? I mean, is that on purpose, or is it just a coincidence? I don't think it's a coincidence. Yeah. Seven it's, barons it's, it's, and... It's not, it's not uh, a coincidence. It's, it is on purpose. Uh, that's something that I need to dive into, but I'll tell you this, and hopefully I'm not giving too much away, and uh, I get in trouble <laughs> oh, about we've, this. Great, we've we've, we've brought them to the line again. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> I just walk up to that line and just like, okay, oh, that's all right. As long as you don't cross it, it's okay. Jump. Oh wait, Chairman, I think you got an email. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> um, there is. We had. We got in scripts in the second eight. And we knew it was going to happen, and we all started talking about this. <sighs> <laughs> I'm in so much trouble. Hey, hey listen, um, don't, you the working know, it's title okay. for one script. The working title for one script was The Magnificent Seven. Right. Right. 
And, okay. and, and you've mentioned that before, so that's so I okay. I mentioned that before because yeah. there are seven individuals who are going to take on Pilgrim okay. and the Acolytes yeah. and so forth and so on. Okay. Seven. Yeah. And it's awesome. And it's just, I mean, it's bananas. So it, so it is a thing. So it is a thing. Okay, yeah. Yes, it's, it's, and it's, the yes, threes it's one of those and things. all these kind of. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And it's, wow. I mean, it's awesome. When I read that, I was, because remember, the Seven Samurai. Right. Yeah. Uh, those type of things. Yeah. You know, the Magnificent Seven, mm-hmm. right? The original. Yeah. So it just falls right in line. So, yeah, it's on purpose. Uh, gonna awesome. go watch that again. Awesome. Uh, it makes us it makes us uh, anticipate uh, January coming. Uh, I know. See, this is uh, what drives me up the it wall. Does, it kills it kills us too. Oh, I mean, it kills us man. too. You know what? How about this? We'll have you come back once every month, <laughs> just for you I'll to say it. one extra thing. Yeah. Uh, one little right. extra thing. You just told that line. Yeah. Just, just a line. little bit. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe that'll push AMC to like just release right. it. Yeah, right. I know. Like, right. Oh, Sherman's just gonna just do it. Show, yeah. Right? So just do it. Just do it before he does before it. Just do it. Before he yeah. gives gives that way too much. Yeah. We, uh, oh, listen, we're so we're awesome. constantly awesome. <laughs> we're constantly that trying to awesome. promote as much we can and trying to come up with with different video ideas and things like that. So what we're gonna do um we have our own little we gave ourselves our own jobs just to rewatch everything and within right. the next couple months uh, between now until january we want to do like a re-release of season one so maybe we're gonna do like that. a whole recap hey maybe yeah. maybe if sherman wants to rewatch season one like we are and yeah, then he'd I'll come on, help us recap it. Yeah. I'll rewatch season one. All right, yeah. do, just, just yeah. do it. Just do it. I'll I'm already on episode two. Yeah. I'm on episode two. And it's and, only six um, episodes, I believe. That was only six episodes. Six, six yeah. episodes. Yeah. So we want to do, like, recap stuff. Like, we want to, you know, leading up, we want to get people more, you know, check it, show. This was what season one was about, you know? So we'll do a little yeah. recap. We'll just have fun. Well, you know, we'll talk about the and characters. season two. And I notice a lot of stuff. Two. Obviously, when you rewatch, you notice a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But and remember, cool. a lot of stuff that they couldn't get in season one, they put in season two. Right. Because Moon, Nathaniel Moon was supposed to be in season one, but they could, they didn't have enough episode, episodes. Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that, um, there's a lot of Easter eggs that from season one and two that you'll see in the next eight. Okay. Oh, so we definitely got to catch up on them. Yeah, get yeah. Back into You'll see them. in the cool. next eight. Yeah. Very cool. All right, cool. So I think that's it with the questions. That's going to do it. Uh, you know, um, once again, uh, Sherman, thank you for answering the questions oh, from the guys. community. Thank yes. You. The community, thank you guys for, um, I forgot my camera's down here now. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all the questions. And, you know, sorry if we didn't get to all your questions. Well, you know, we can get them at another time. We'll do it again. We'll yeah, absolutely. Again. Thank you, Sherman, for, for that. And, yes. um, you know, that's. I, I want to thank everybody who has signed the petition. If you didn't know, we do have a yes. petition, so it's linked below. The Facebook group that that we're talking about is also linked below. Go come over and go talk to all of out, us. Check us out. Yeah. Uh, Sherman's always in there. He's always. I'm always in there. He's always in there. That's why we're making sure there. everybody was just instant messaging us and not writing yeah, the question yeah. right yeah, in. Yeah, I said make sure. Yeah. I stopped looking because I don't. I didn't want to see right. any questions. I'm like, don't cheat, dude. Don't yeah, don't yeah. Cheat. So. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, so so that's gonna do it for us here. Yeah. Um, we will we're gonna get you guys. If you guys want to be on our trivia show, if you want to help write questions for the trivia show, you can you know add yeah, us at just, Third Person Pod on everything. Just suggest them and stuff. Sherman's gonna write some more questions. So when we have more more um, other actors on the show, uh, we're gonna get on there. Um, and uh, I mean, it. check us out at Third Person Podcast, of course, on YouTube. Write in the comments below. Let us know what you think of this video. Let Write the questions there. Uh, Sherman, don't I, look. I, I don't uh, think anybody's seen the t-shirt, like the Clipper t-shirt. Yes. This yes. Is, okay, so this is the one that uh, Daniel was wearing. Oh, yeah. And this, was from, this is the stunt team, right? You guys had these made yeah, for the stunt, stunt team? team. Yeah. 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 Daniel yeah. had them made. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are so awesome. cool. Sherman, where, they, where can everybody reach you? Uh, they can reach me at uh, Sherm Gus on Facebook and uh, Sherm Gus on, uh, well, Sherman Gus is on Twitter. I mean, well, Sherman Augustus, Sherman Augustus is A U G U S two because there's another Sherman Augustus out there. So, you uh, know, I get robbed. Yeah. Uh, on on um, on Twitter and uh, Sherman Gus or Sherman Augustus on Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. So that's gonna right. do it, Sherman. We will see you next time when you're on our show. Hang out with us. That's right. And Thank that's you so it, guys. Much. Thank, Thank you, you guys so, much. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You got it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want more Into the Badlands content, please check out our playlist up there in the top left. And if you're like me and you love the 80s, why not check out the Retro Squat YouTube channel? Or you can click one of the videos right here.